Kajaki was one of the last sort of platoon houses, as they became known, where we were drawn into these outstations, these, these towns and villages up in northern Helmand. We were very thinly spread. Um, we didn't have that many people up there. We had a sort of company minor, so 60 or 70 um, soldiers. Small team were out doing a patrol, clearance patrol or otherwise. And the tragedy, they walked onto a unmarked legacy minefield which had been left by the Soviets. And uh, the story unfolds from that point of, you know, one of them engaging a mine, getting injured, and the, and the, the film goes from there of, of telling this very dramatic and uh, tragic story as it turned out to be. I was actually briefing uh, the Minister of State for Armed Forces that day, and the report started coming in that we'd had uh, a, an injury, and I think the reality of war really hit him very, very hard that day. It was a very poignant day. It's about real people who are your next door neighbour's kids in a foreign country in a totally alien environment and all of a sudden they're propelled into, in, into this conflict and it's, it's about sort of uh, human endurance and, and, and human bravery. Well the fact is, you know, it doesn't matter where they are, nothing matters. All that matters is getting their mate out of the ship. These are 18, 19, 20 year old guys taken from uh, Huddersfield and Bristol and put in the middle of the desert in, in Afghanistan, being shot at, uh, you know, rockets flying over their heads and then suddenly on this one day uh, being uh, presented with the most horrific situation, the most demanding and challenging situation. And what the film really does is look at how they rise to that situation, when the chip's down, when the tough questions are asked of them. Uh, how do they behave and almost universally they behave with extraordinary humbling uh, bravery that uh, is a great testament to the armed forces, it's a great testament to the guys involved and there is no greater story of, of human drama and human sacrifice than, than that. And I, so that is really what the film has become about in spite of the fact that it's an incredibly tense you, you know, uh, war, war movie. It's what the blokes do. You know, huge, tremendous courage. It demonstrates why soldiers, servicemen fight. And you know, it's for themselves, it's for their mates, it's for their platoons, their company, their regiment. There were lots of other Mark Wrights out there uh, during the six months tour and subsequently. But I think what he demonstrated uh, on that day and his colleagues, they're all equally brave. I think he is the commander, the leader, you know, showed it over and above. It is and will be portrayed as a very powerful story given that authenticity was our primary goal in, um, in embarking on this project. We wanted, if possible, to tell a story that was either very closely inspired by a true event or uh, was you know, a dramatised telling of a, tr a true story. The more you meet these guys, the more you get to know them as individuals, the more you hear their individual uh, recollections of this story, uh, the more we thought, you know, we don't need to do an awful lot here. We need to uh, get them up on screen, get them well cast, get it feeling like a movie. But beyond that, to sort of stand back because the, the story had a power, the characters had a power that, to be honest, if we were making it up, we couldn't get anywhere close to that.